Hi everybody, how you doing today? Welcome to this, what is it, 87th live stream? Uh, no, it's more than 87, isn't it? It's, uh, it's live stream number 88. Very auspicious number, a lot of symmetry in that number. Uh, I wanna say hi to some of you who've already joined us. Hi to Frank Geyer in Connecticut, Isar Rinardi in Brussels. Uh, who, say, who says, I hope you and your loved ones are all safe, safe after the tornadoes. We've had some insane tornadoes here in the U.S. Uh, hi to Molly Shen in Portland, Maine. Losi Pfeiffer, Losi and William in Oregon. Um, Paul James Brown in Maui. Pat in Toronto. Danielle Pralong in Switzerland. Uh, who says, there's tons of snow, frost. Makes one want a cozy night with great music. Jonathan Glass, who asked for some Koi Taino or some Toshiko Akiyoshi in honor of their birthdays. Um, music Art in Gdansk, Poland, Joyce Glasgow, uh, Tommy Wilson, Grace Chu, Silvana Raffo, David Shine, hi. Alan Haggard in Rainham, Massachusetts. Mark Hilliard Wilson in Seattle. Lori Wilson in Santa Barbara. Tamta Muradashvili in Georgia. Uh, Carol McGoffin in Underhill, Vermont. It's incredible how spread out we are. Fran Blaine in Santa Monica, Xavier Fanuel, uh, Jamie, Jamie Baker, so, um, and Freda Tepfer, who is multitasking. Um, one thing I wanna say is that I think I, I, I'd like to play some uh, Bach today, because I have a concert in Washington, D.C. at the Strathmore in a few days, it's on Thursday, I'm playing a solo concert of my project Inventions Reinventions, where I play the Inventions by Bach. And after each one of, well, not after each one of the Inventions, but for the missing keys, the ones he didn't write Inventions for, uh, I improvise an invention of my own. <clears throat> and I thought it'd be fun today to explore uh, turning those inventions upside down, which is something I haven't done with, uh, with many of them. I've turned some of them upside down, but, but most of them I haven't. And uh, to be honest, it's also a good way to put myself on the spot ahead of this concert to play these inventions. So one thing I should warn you about is that uh, it's very likely that the Facebook stream will cut out because every time I play Bach, they think I'm um, playing a recording of somebody else playing Bach. Uh, so in that case, head to youtube.com slash um, Dan Tepfer Music youtube.com slash dantep for music and you'll be able to find the stream there it's never been cut out on youtube so that should be fine I, actually i'm going to put it in the in the um in the comments here youtube.com slash dantep for music and actually slash live will be even better um yeah and before i do that i want to uh thank my supporters on patreon who make these shows possible Thanks to all of you. Um, you can sign up for five bucks a month. And uh, that's really what makes these shows continue. So I think I'm going to do the inventions in order. I'm going to start with C major and then just go up the list. Um, and after each one, I'm going to have my disclavier here uh, make an inversion of what you just heard. So it'll be exactly what I just played, but flipped upside down. So uh, here we go. Mark Hilliard Wilson says, Google is much more sympathetic to Bach than Facebook. Than Facebook. Yeah, strange how that happens, isn't it? Here we go. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Isn't that nice? I love that one. That's, that's one of the ones that I'd done before. And um, I'm actually preparing an edition right now of the Goldberg Variations inverted so that people can play it on the piano. Uh, it's almost finished. And um, one of the things I, I noted in my introduction is that when we hear this music upside down, it really makes us, makes us hear it uh, afresh. And that's pretty cool because we've heard this music so much. It's kind of nice to have the experience of hearing it for the first time in some ways. Anyway, here is variation um, number two, which is in C minor. It's a canon.
I'd never heard that one before. Um, I'd never heard that one upside down before. And uh, it's, it's so beautiful because the original is, has this very uh, strong minor feel to it, right? Uh, has a kind of a sadness to it. And in the inversion, it's major. And it just changes the entire emotional affect. Molly Shen asks, what, what is it about counterpoint that brings such, such solace? After even upside down, it works its magic. Well, that's the beauty of counterpoint is that since counterpoint is about intervals, it's about the distances between notes and how to move between these different distances between notes. If you turn it upside down in a completely faithful way, you preserve all those distances between notes. They're upside down, but this it's exactly the same distances. So the same rules of counterpoint apply, and um, pretty much all the rules of counterpoint are still satisfied. The only thing that's a little different is that um, suspensions, which traditionally in counterpoint are only allowed to resolve downwards, uh, in the in the inversion they resolve upwards. Uh, happy Monday to Chris, to Chris, my my uncle in uh, Portland, Oregon. Carol McGoffin says, "Love it, so delightful as the sun comes out here." Okay, let's move on uh, to invention number three, which is in D major. time since I've since I've done these uh, upside down Bach transformations on these live streams and um, I just I just um, I just love the way it sounds for example in that one um, there's this moment in the original that has this wonderful pedal point but it's in the it's in the the right hand so um, sounded so beautiful upside down. There's a real, um, actually, I kind of want to hear that again. 
let's see, um, something like this. Uh, one more time. <laughs> I messed this up. Um, um, let me do it one more time. Here we go. So that's the moment that I loved. Um, uh, something like that. Uh, it's so cool to hear this Phrygian moment. It's something that you wouldn't hear Bach doing usually. Phrygian sound, but um, but actually he's doing it. He's just doing it upside down. Carol McGoffin, Carol McGoffin says, loving these, it makes the chaos and sadness in the world seem more orderly somehow, feeling miserable about not, not being in D.C. to see you at Strathmore. Next time, I hope, but, but I agree. That's a, that's a feeling that, um, that Bach can give you, um, that, that feeling of of, um, of order, of things coming back into order. Okay, um, let's move on. Invention number three in D minor. Also, how these end in what feels like a question now, right? Um, in the originals, the, the the conclusion feels final. In these inversions, they feel like a question. Mark Hillard Wilson says, "Ha, what a delight!" And Danielle Prolong says, "Love the inverted trills." Yeah, there's that very um, dissonant moment in this variation. Uh, that's pretty dissonant in the original, but because the dissonance is in the bass, um, it, it functions in a way that 
that feels acceptable, but, but in the inversion, uh, it really is surprising. Or maybe it's just as surprising in the original, it's just that we've gotten used to it. Silvano, Silvano Raffo says, every inversion ends with a, isn't it? It's true. Yeah, that's totally the feeling. Um, or like, don't you think? <laughs> okay, here's um, variation, sorry, invention five in E flat major. that one. Um, it's so cool. You know, th this is one of the inventions that is about a long form theme. So, so, you know, Bach and the inventions, he's really teaching, these are really teaching tools. I mean, in, in addition to being beautiful works of art, he's teaching his sons and also uh, his students about composition. And um, they were actually composed in a different order from the way they were published. Um, so they're published going up chromatically. So you've got C major, C minor, then D major, D, D, D minor, E flat major, then F major, F minor, etc. going up like that. But actually they were composed kind of um, starting with the diatonic keys of C major. So you, the first one is C major, then D minor, then E minor, then F major, then G major, then A minor, then B major, then B flat major going down, 
then A major, then G minor, then F minor, then E major, then E flat major, which is the one I just played, um, and finally C minor is actually the last one. And, and, and they're actually evolving in complexity, like um, invention number one is just about this, this very, very short and simple theme. That's it. In fact, the theme is just, that's really the theme. And as he uh, moves through these, these inventions, they get more and more complex. So the one I just played, the one in E flat, is um, an exploration of this idea of long themes. That's, that's, a, that's the theme, and it's really quite long. And so it's very recognizable, it's long, it has a lot of character. So to hear that upside down is, is super cool, I think. Um, Frank Geyer says, I'm noticing that all the visuals are circular. Is that a result of your design? Is it wholly the music or a combination? There was mention of dissonance. Would that not have created a visual blip? So um, yes, that is my design. and. It's just something that I find that I find visually appealing, and somehow the the kind of circularity of it, I think, is really appropriate for for Bach. It just feels like it has the right kind of um, groundedness to it. And no, the my visualization wouldn't wouldn't show dissonance as some kind of a blip. Um, all it's showing is is the notes. It's kind of like a live score. Like if you look at a score. There isn't anything that visually that stands out if there's dissonance, unless you carefully read the music and you can see that there'd be a dissonance with other notes. But here's here's something that'll show you how this um, visualization functions. Okay, so you can see that the time is always going around circularly, right, um, in, in this direction. And um, the closer to the inner, to, to the center of the circle, the, the, the dot is, and the lower the note, right? That's the middle of the circle. And the further away from it it is, the higher the note. So the distance from the center of the circle tells you how high the note is. And time is always going around. It's fun, right? Um, Joyce Glasgow says, a star pattern again and a cat's face. Yeah. On to invention number six, are we at? Yeah, six, which is um, E major.
Wow, I thought that one was really gorgeous. I, I've never uh, heard that one um, upside down before. Actually, I hadn't heard the previous previous one either. I think the only ones I've heard so far that I that I'd heard before were the number one in C major, and the number um, four in D minor. So this is all new to me. Joyce Glasgow says, "I would love to see some different examples using other visual algorithms if it is possible." Um, and Danielle Prolong says, "The one the way this one is written with contrary motions makes it perfect for inversion." That's a really good observation. Um, there's so much inversion already in the original, like that's really the same shape, but going in opposite directions. So one hand is really playing the inversion of the other just off by, um, by an eighth note. So when you invert it, you still maintain that, that, that same, that same shape. <clears throat> um, I had a Prem Putra who's in Indonesia and uh, Ador Rabar. Um, so I think I'm going to try to um, take Joyce's suggestion about changing the, the, the visualization. I actually can do that. I have to stop my program here and, and, and load, um, load a different visualization. Let's see. Um, there's one that I made that maps um, low notes. So, so the, the, the height of the note, whether it's high or low, is mapped um, up and down on the screen. So higher notes are higher on the screen, lower notes are lower on the screen. Oh, sorry, no, no, other way around. Um, the height of the note is mapped left to right. So low notes are all the way to the left of the screen, high notes are all the way to the right, and then up and down on the screen is how loud the note is, so the velocity of the note. So let, let, let's try that. Uh, let me know what you think. Okay. Here we go. Uh, we're up to uh, invention I'm going to forget the numbers now, but invention in E minor, which is one of the original inventions, and, and this one where he's exploring, it seems to me, uh, a style called um, French overture or, or overture style. Gary Daly says, um, I find it fascinating that these upside down pieces are like shadow mirror versions of the originals. Brings to mind the idea of dark matter, i.e. it's hidden inside what we can see. It speaks volumes about the structural integrity of the music. Yes, indeed. Really good point and well put. It speaks volumes about the structural integrity of the music. Exactly. Symmetry and beauty. Also fascinated by the major minor relationships, particularly in the C minor and D major. It seems the relative major and minor keys were just hiding inside the music and become clear when reversed. Thank you, Dan, for your wonderful music and creations. Thank you for your very insightful comment, Gary. Okay, so now the E minor invention.
And now the F major invention, one of the most famous of the bunch. Salvano Raffo says, reminds us that silence is a part of music too. I think he was referring to how long it took to, for that um, inversion to start just now. Um, Danielle Prolong says, it seems that playing inversions after each inventions after each invention had defeated the copyright bot so far tonight. <laughs> well, you know, that's one really interesting thing about this. If, you know, if I play the original as I'm playing today, it's totally possible that Facebook will, will shut down the stream. But if I only played the inversion, they would never pick it up, even though it's the same information, you know? Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Joyce Glasgow says, molecular biology, equations, constellations, where universal equations are hidden and kept for inquiring minds to look up and decipher. Yeah, I wonder how you feel about this visualization versus um, the other one. To me, this one's super cool when I'm doing free improvisation. You know, like if I go. Um, like it's very dramatic, you know. But for Bach, it feels like it doesn't quite reveal the structure of the music in the way that I want it to. Anyway, let's do one more with this, this visualization and let me know what you think about it and then I might switch it back. This is the F major. That might be my favorite so far. Wasn't that amazing? I, I have never heard that one upside down before. I thought that was super cool. Um, rhythm is so important in these inversions. Um, anything that has a very strong pulse, like what I just played, um, that makes the inversions work all that much better. And I think that that invention is particularly remarkable in, in the way it balances the light and the dark. You know, it has this very, very simple theme. I mean, it's just literally an arpeggiated triad, but then it gets into these. You know. These, these really interesting diminished chords. And, um, and so in the inversion, we still get that balance of light and dark, even though it's actually reversed. Um, Carol McGoffin says, wow, the visualiz visualization is very dramatic for this one, really works. Um, Joyce Glasgow asks for a third type of visualization. I think the only one that I have, oh, actually, yeah, here, I have another type that I could do for you. Um, 
Here we go. Let's see. This one, I believe, if I remember correctly, I'm literally commenting out code here. <laughs> this one, um, is kind of like the most score-like of them all. Basically, time goes by the screen um, this way, and higher notes on the keyboard are higher in the screen, lower notes are lower, and um, that's basically it. Oh, and um, louder notes just have bigger shapes. Uh, so. Molly Shen says, this is so exciting. I can hardly breathe, truth be told. Love the upside down and love Dan talking about it. My pleasure. Um, Fran Geyer says, this is deep, but you do the audio visual combination that you think is best. I'm gonna listen and watch now. Um, yeah, let's try, this, let's try this, this, uh, this third visualization. And I think ultimately I'm gonna come back to the circular one, which I think is the best for, for Bach. Oops, didn't comment out all the code that I needed to comment out. Let's see. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're up to the first very uh, first invention that arguably should be played slowly. Um, you don't have to. They, there, there are no tempo indications on this music, and this is part of what makes it wonderful is that it's extremely creative for the performer. There's so much space left to the performer to, to interpret it however they want. And but this one, this is the invention of F minor, and I think it makes it makes sense that it be circular. Isa Renardi says the circular one is also my favorite. Yeah, good taste. Okay, here we go. Guess what? I forgot to press record on that one. So um, I guess you're going to have to hear that one again. Here we go. My apologies.
Yeah, actually, I wonder, so I, I, I played it faster the second time. Um, and I think it worked well like that in the inversion, but um, interesting to hear it in, in that much looser tempo that I originally played. Joyce Glasgow writes, bolts of hand-dyed silk floating in space, boldly advancing, ombre, subtle shadows, melting together, rust red, burnt orange, coffee-colored sunset, then blue suddenly, surprisingly appears. Salvana Raffo says, so sweet this one. Yeah, it was, it's interesting, right? In the original, it really has a, it's really quite somber. It's kind of crazy to think that that same music can sound so much, so much um, sweeter, so much lighter, upside down. Uh, on to one of my favorites of the bunch, the G major, which is um, it's part of this um, series in the inventions that's about arpeggiation. So we have. Um, the F major, remember? The theme there is an arpeggio. And same with the G major. It's also about arpeggiation. So uh, F major, G major, and A minor are all about this idea of arpeggiation and what can be done with that. So here's G major. That's a really fun one, and actually a really hard one too. Um, all these lines uh, need to be well phrased because they're so full of character. And since it's, since I'm playing it pretty quickly, um, one thing that the inversion does is it really reveals if there are any kind of any moments of inattention from me to those melodies, especially in the left hand, since it ends up in the treble. Um, Steve Cantor says, I'm sure this is a minority opinion, but I find the overhead camera view when you're playing to be just as captivating as the visualizations. The digital choreography is beautiful to watch. I'm sure you're not in the minority there. I think that overhead view really is a visualization of the music. It, it's its own kind of live score. Um, Grace Chu says, it's the battle of the algorithms over at Facebook. Yeah, I guess the stream is, has been shut down over there. But glad you guys have found me on, on YouTube. Uh, on to invention in G minor, uh, which is one of these inventions that's about these, this uh, longer theme. The theme goes Yeah, 
that's the whole theme and it's, it's, it's a long thing. So here we go. This is the G minor. And maybe um, for Steve Cantor, I think I'm going to do, um, oh, interesting. For, Sil for, for Joyce Glasgow and George Thomas Wilson, Facebook continues unabated. So it seems like it's a regional thing. Silvana Raffo asks, out of curiosity, who might be your favorite Bach performer of variations and inventions? Um, well, I, I guess at the top of my list, I would put um, Gould, of course, who's, who's, been, um, who's been a lifelong inspiration. I listened to him when I was a kid. Uh, but also, more recently, I'm a huge fan of Pierre Hantai's on the harpsichord. That's H-A-N-T-A-I with an umlaut on the I, or a tréma, as we say in French, because uh, he's French, Pierre Hantai. Um, he plays Bach with an incredible rhythmic looseness, but that is super appropriate at all times and, and is very uh, full of, of vigor and life. And it's uh, really exciting, I find. Um, yes, so this one with the overhead view uh, for the G minor and no visualizations. Here we go. And guess what? I again forgot to turn the, the recording on. So my apologies. Um, hopefully this will be the last time, but you'll have to hear that one again. Play it a little faster, I think, this time. Thank you. 
Wow, I thought that one worked really well. Um, another one, well, it's, this is true of most of these. Another one that I have not heard before. But yeah, I thought that worked really well. Um, what I really love about these, these inversions is that the, the dramatic arc of the piece is, is kept, right? There's really this sense of moving through an adventure that still makes sense, even though it's upside down. Uh, I thought it was super cool, too, that to hear that major triad at the end. That's not actually in a text, but I finished in a G minor um, with a G minor arpeggiation, which is the key of, the, of that invention. And then in the, in the inversion to hear it in major was... It's a nice surprise. Joyce Glasgow says, I see this oddly juxtaposed as a soundtrack for the roadrunner bird dashing his way on spindly legs through canyons. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, let's move on to the invention in A major. And I think I'm going to go back to uh, my circular visualization for this one. Almost there. There we go. Uh, looks like not quite. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Here is invention in A major, also one of my favorites. I, this one should be really interesting, upside down.
Wow, I really enjoyed that one. Um, that's another one of the ones that uh, is about this long theme. Long theme. Yala bam 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 that's the long theme and um, I think those long themes work really well upside down because since they're this you know meaty melody this meaty melody also comes out strongly in the inversion Carol McGoffin says these inversions are so amazing powerful and refreshing um, let's move on to invention in A minor um, which as I mentioned earlier, is one of the ones uh, that, that explores arpeggiation. So it's arpeggiation, but it's, it's a more complex arpeggiation than, um, than the one in F major, which is just, and the one in G major. This one, actually, there's some movement between the, uh, the arpeggiation. So it's not just a static chord, it's actually moving between chords. So here's A minor. was, I think, uh, definitely one of my favorites so far. Uh, one of the really, really cool things about this inversion process is that it changes the, it changes the direction of harmony. So, you know, there's some moments in the original here where Bach is, is, um, is doing some conventional, some movement through harmonies that is conventional, like... Um, But when you invert that, it'll actually go backwards. So it'll be like. Which is really surprising. Or you might have um, some moments where you are going, let's see, in minor, you know, it'd be, be fairly conventional to do something like. So where that bass line goes. And you, when you invert that, you have this crazy stuff like... Um, something like that. that. That wasn't an exact inversion of what I just played. But um, anyway, the, the, the harmonic movement is really surprising. And I thought that really came out in this last variation. Joyce Glasgow says, the one before this uh, sounded much more predominant in the low end when inverted. Yeah, that's um, actually something I have to deal with 
uh, when inverting things on the piano because if I strike this note here, like this high A, with a certain amount of, of, um, of sound, of force, if, you, if the computer then applies that exact, exact same amount of force to this one, it's actually going to be a lot louder, louder in comparison. And it is something I try to compensate for in my software so that when it, when it, when it inverts, uh, the balance of the voices stays good. But it's not perfect, and sometimes things end up a bit bass heavy. And one thing that it actually really makes me do is um, pay a lot more attention to my left hand and try to put a lot more um, sound and, 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 and um, attention on the left hand. So that's a pretty positive thing as an exercise anyway. It uh, looks like Facebook has entirely shut down now. <laughs> oh boy. Um, let's, uh, we're almost to the end here. Let's uh, check out the invention in B flat major, one of my all time favorites. That one worked really well. Uh, by the way, for those watching on Facebook where things are falling apart and you can't comment anymore because they're closing my stream, um, go to YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash music dot slash live. In any case, we're approaching the end of this stream, but youtube.com slash music slash live. 
Uh, Fran Blaine says, so far my video is still working on Facebook and completely in sync with the YouTube. Interesting. Yeah, it's so interesting that uh, different people are having different experiences with it. I mean, I think the thing is that um, Facebook has you know servers all over the world and, and not everything is in sync. Grace Chu says, that was almost palindromic. Yeah, I agree. There's, um, this is kind of an outlier among the inventions. There's something very, very simple about it. All the other inventions have multiple modulations. They go to different keys. This B-flat major invention only very briefly goes to the dominant and spends the entire time in B-flat major other than that. So it's one of the simplest harmonically. It's probably the simplest harmonically. Uh, and, and in the inversion, it had this this real sweetness that almost sounded, it's probably the one where the inversion sounded the most similar to the original, don't you think? Um, Silvano Rafa says, I don't know, Italian Facebook seems so uselessly severe. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. The whole thing seems uselessly severe. I mean, I actually have a friend who works at Facebook and I've, I've um, talked to her about what could be done about this and she did submit uh, a dispute internally and, and all of that. But the thing is, this is a problem across the board, like even huge performing arts organizations when they were doing streaming during the pandemic had the same problem. So it's not just me. Okay, so we've arrived at the very last invention of the set, the, um, the B minor. I said B major earlier. I meant B minor, of course. Um, the B minor. And let's hear how it goes. like a really nice note 
to finish on. Um, that B minor invention that I just played, that's the first one in the set, if, if you're counting uh, the original order that I described earlier, where he went first through the, through the keys that are closest to C major. So C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then B minor. Uh, if you're going through to that through through in that order, then the B minor one is the first one that deals with this idea of the long theme. It's a you know it's a meaty melody, very different from or which are just like these little tiny building blocks of melody. It's a lot longer. So, um, yeah, I love the way that sounded and the inversion. I think because you could still hear that theme so clearly. Um, Annick Lafarge, by the way, whose book I'm finally reading, it took me a long time to get around to it, um, but Annick Lafarge's book, um, um, oh, now I can't remember the title. Uh, Chasing Chopin, right? Chasing Chopin. Um, I, I've, I've, I've started reading it and it is really wonderful. For those of you who haven't read it, I recommend it highly. Is that the right title? Chasing Chopin? Um, it's an exploration of, on the one hand, Chopin's life, and on the other hand, the effect that he still has on our society today. Carol McGoffin says, the circular visual work fabulously on that one and mark mitchell says thanks for playing all that bach for us even if facebook blows up i love hearing you play box music thank you mark i love playing box music so it's a win-win um and yes the title is chasing chopin uh, and Silvano cardin aka the lonely giraffe giraffe our resident um, visual artist says this was a great show thank you Silvano. can't wait to hear what you can't wait to see what you've drawn for this one. Carol McGoffin says, yes, Dan, thank you, thank you, thank you. What a marvelous Bach Monday. I agree with Anik Healing. Um, Isa Renardi says, a huge thank you for this extended upside down time. We really can't get enough of it. Thank you, Isa. So glad you like it. Um, so that's all, folks. Um, I want to say one more thank you to uh, Patreon supporters, and I'll be back next week. Maybe I'll try to do some uh, Christmas music next week. What do you think of that? What do you think of that idea? Uh, I wonder if um, maybe Kristen Berardi is free and we could try playing some Christmas carols uh, between, between New York and Switzerland. And for those of you in the, in the DC area, uh, I am playing Inventions Reinventions this Thursday at the Strathmore. The information's on my website, danceupfor.com. And I uh, hope to see some of you there. Okay. Thank you all, and uh, see you very soon. Bye-bye.